I made this video to walk through some calculations to load equal masses of protein in different lanes of an SDS page gel, taking into account different starting concentrations of the proteins, as well as the fact that we're going to be diluting our sample in the loading buffer. So I'll go through a little bit of the background and theory, um, and then some actual calculations. So I hope that this helps you with yours. So we're doing a protein purification and we want to compare the purity of different preparations or different steps along the preparation. Or maybe we're doing something like a Western blot where we actually want to compare how much of a specific protein there is in a variety of samples. In either of these cases, what how strong the bands look is going to depend on how much we load. And so if we're wanting to compare between samples, whether to see like is a protein expressed more or less in different cells, maybe with the Western blot, or to measure like purity, how many of us, how many bands are there in a sample and how strong are those different bands? Maybe the band that we care about is this band, but in these samples, we're gonna have other bands too. And so if we want to compare the purity, say, of these different samples, we're going to want to met, we're going to want to load equal amounts of total protein. And this is going to then allow us to compare, okay, well, what is the strength of our protein of interest compared to those other bands? Because we can't measure the concentration of just the single band. When we do a concentration measurement, whether it's something with like a Bradford or a BCA, or whether it's something like with a nanodrop, all of those are measuring total protein concentration. So we do, we know, we know, or we can measure total protein concentration. But if what we care about is the concentration of a specific protein in there, well, then we're going to need to see, okay, well, what, how strong is that band if we load equal amounts of total protein concentration? So our goal is going to be to load equal amounts of total protein. And then we're going to compare the strength of our band of interest and um, contaminating bands. So for those we would look at like, how many are there? How many other bands are there? How strong are there? So when we run an SDS page gel, basically what we're going to do is we're gonna be separating the proteins based on their size. And so we might have some protein of interest. This is the protein we're trying to purify, say. And we're going to have this, if we had a super duper pure protein, we just have this one band on the gel. And if we were to load a lot, a lot, a lot of that protein, we get something like this. And if we had loaded too much, we'd probably just get like a smear and it would mess up our gel. So we don't want to load too much. But we also don't want to load too little that we don't see any. So if you have a pure protein, so if you have a purified protein, so it's going to depend on the type of gel you, you're running, um, how big the wells are, say, and how thick the gel is. This is going to dictate like how much you can load. But typically you want to load probably like maybe less than less, less than like four micrograms or so. Um, that's that's a rough. And again, you want to look at like the manual and that stuff for your gel. But typically you don't want to load too much of that or you're overload it. But now say you had a gel that was not, you had a protein that was not very pure. And so now when we go and we run our gel, we're going to have some of that protein of interest. But now we're going to have a lot of other stuff. We're going to have tons and tons of other little bands. And depending on how pure the sample is, we might have more or less of these bands. If we're starting with something um, like if we're starting with like if we're something is semi-purified, we might have to see other distinct bands kind of like this. But if you're doing something where maybe you're purifying a protein and you you're starting with like a lysate or if you're doing a western blot and you have a lysate that you're trying to probe basically here you're going to have a lot a lot of bands 
And now if you consider this one band, what proportion is this band in this gel compared to all of this? Well, here, if we load the total concentration, our total concentration that, or our total mass, that's pretty much all going to be our protein of interest. But if we were to load that same mass of a sample that was really impure, well, now what's going to happen is that if we were to load that same mass of protein, we would get something where we would have very, very little of our protein. We might even barely be able to see it because of all of this other stuff. And so because, remember, we can't measure just our protein of interest, we can only measure total protein. If we were to measure the same amount of total protein, our band would be a lot lighter. And those would be like extreme cases, but you can imagine if, say, if say you had two bands of equal intensity. Um, so you have these like two bands of equal intensity. If you were to load the same amount, if you were to load the same amount of this sample on this gel as you did in this lane. So let's just pretend like we don't have this here. So we loaded some amount here. So maybe that was our four micrograms. And now we want to go and we want to load this sample. Well, now our band is only going to be, now our band is only going to be about half as strong. And we're going to see the presence of that second band. So this is a way in which we can then compare the pu relative purity of the samples. And this can be really helpful if you're doing things like trying to pure to like you're doing trying to optimize a protein purification or you're trying to compare different um, preparations of a protein. So like different if you make mutations to a protein and then you're trying to show that these proteins have different um, activities, you want to show, okay, well, our proteins are the same purity and we're loading the same, uh, we're using the same amount. So we've measured the concentration accurately, basically. And so you might want to run a gel like this. Um, this is from one of my graduate school gels when I had a bunch of different protein um, constructs and I was trying to compare the purity of those samples and show that I was measuring them with um, similar, um, like the concentration measurements were, um, were consistent. And so you can see that in some of these samples, they were a little less pure than others, but overall the band strength for these is going to be the same. And so for this gel, um, I calculated so that I could load like four micrograms of each protein, because remember this is a purified protein. If we're doing something with um, that's less purified, well now you're gonna have to, you wanna want to load um, more micrograms. Um, I should mention too that this is for Chromacy. So if you're doing a Western blot where you're doing an antibody detection, you're not going to need as much of the purified protein. But in either case, if you're loading like a lysate, so something that's um, lysate or something else that's fairly impure, you're probably going to want to load uh, maybe like 20 micrograms to 50 micrograms. And again, it's going to depend on your um, your detection method, your gel size, all of this good stuff. And so basically, you're going to want to load more of that because the band of interest is going to represent a smaller proportion of it. Okay, so in either of these cases, though, it's important that we're measure we're, um, if we want to compare between lanes. So if we want to compare between lanes, We need to load equal amounts, which means that we need to calculate how to load equal amounts. So for each sample, what we're going to have is we're going to have our sample, and we're going to have our sample loading die. And the sample loading guy is going to have SDS, or lately I've actually been using an LDS sample buffer. It's just a different detergent. This is going to unfold the proteins and it's going to give them the negative charge um, that's going to allow them to move through the gel using um, electricity. And it's also got stuff to help them um, like sink into the well and not flow back up and get reduced and all that good stuff, as well as the dye that's going to help us track its progress, but not show us where the individual bands are. So we have our sample and our sample loading dye. And this is often 4x 
sometimes at 6x. So what that means is it's going to be four times or six times as concentrated as we actually want to use it at. So if we were to load four microliters of a mixture, it would be three microliters of our sample and um, one microliter of the loading dye. Now, often what we want to do is we're gonna load a larger volume. So depending on the well size, you're going to be able to load up to maybe like 20 microliters worth. Some, If it's a smaller gel, if it's a thinner gel, more wells, the wells are gonna be smaller. And so you're going to have to um, look and see what the well capacity is. You don't want to overload the well because then what's gonna happen is it's gonna flow into the neighboring well. And then you're not going to be able, you're gonna have contamination between your wells. And so it's like, is this band really present in this sample? or was it just um, spillover from the sample next to it? So you don't wanna to go too high in the sample volume, but you also don't want to um, go too low because when you have a lower volume, well then differences in your pipetting can make a much bigger effect. And also sometimes you might not have enough, um, your sample might not be concentrated enough to load the same amount in that lower volume. And because remember what we're caring about is we're caring about the final mass that we load and not the final volume. The final volume is just going to be like what we can do. What um, That's just going to be like a practical thing in terms of how much we're actually loading. So typically maybe we're going to load um, somewhere around like 10 microliters typically, 10 microliters, maybe up to 20 microliters depending on the size of the well. To make your life easier, okay. so this is my strategy for doing this in order to make our lives easier. So prepare the samples to load equal volumes. So I know that I just said that we want to load equal masses, but so we could go and we could calculate, we can load different volumes to load equal masses because if our samples have different starting concentrations, we'd have to load different amounts um, in terms of their volumes or what we could do in, to do, so if we want to load equal volumes, so first we have to do is we have to dilute the samples to the same concentration. So I know that I mentioned like wanting to like specific uh, masses you might want to aim for, but if you have one sample that's a lower concentration, that might be the limiting factor. And so you might need to um, tailor this, vault, tailor the concentration. Um, so you might need to tailor this. to sample with the lowest concentration. Now, sometimes that might be too low. And so what you might want to do is actually just have that one be different and just say, okay, well, this is gonna be half the concentration of the others and I'll just take that into account or something like this. But you want to dilute your samples to a concentration and then load the equal amounts. And when you do this, you're going to need to take into account the fact that you're going to have to be, um, the fact that you're gonna have that loading buffer. Okay, so let's do an example. Say we decide that we want to load four, micro, four micrograms So we want to load four micrograms in a volume of 10 microliters. So what does this mean? This means that we're going to need a concentration. We're going to need a final concentration. Final concentration of four micrograms divided by 10 microliters. 
And so that's going to be 0 0.4 micrograms per microliter. Okay, so when you go and you measure protein concentration, you're often going to be given a value that's equal to mg per mil. And what's important to recognize is that micrograms per mil per microliter equals the same as your mg per mil. Um, because you can basically just, if you were to divide or multiply each of these by a thousand, you would then get to mg per mil. And much more on this in my unit, in my dimensional analysis post. But we need to remember that our samples are going to be diluted. By the sample loading buffer. So if, for example, we had a 4x loading die, our actual sample is going to have a concentration of 3 quarters or 0.75 of the, um, of the protein solution, we'll just say. So in our tube, we have some mixture and we have, we have our protein solution and then we have a little bit of the dye. And so this is going to be three quarters our protein and one quarter of the dye, which means that we need this concentration to be um, four thirds as much as we want basically because we're going to have our concentration times three quarters equals this 0.4. And so what we need, what we figure out is that we actually need our concentration to be 0.4 times four thirds. And that's going to give us about 0 0.53 mg per mil. So, or micrograms per microliter, because remember that's the same thing. So this is the concentration that we actually need to calculate. And it's this final concentration that's actually going to be 0.4 micrograms per microliter. So to review, we want our final protein concentration. So we can represent pro concentration by just these brackets. We want our final protein concentration equals 0 0.4 micrograms per microliter. And remember that this is just an example. It, depending on how much you want to load, um, both in terms of how much volume and how much mass, this value is going to be different. So if you wanted to load in a smaller volume, this is going to have to be higher. And if you wanted to load a smaller mass, um, then this would be this would be lower and that sort of thing. And so this is just an example. And so you're going to have to do it for the concentration and for the mass that you decide that you want to load. But this is going to be your final. And so what we're talking about by final is going to be the the um in the mixture. So this is going to be sample plus buffer. And what you're going to do is in order to load equal volumes, you're going to want to dilute your protein samples to have equal um equal concentrations before you actually go and you mix it with that buffer. So what we're going to need to do is this protein concentration. So we need to take this sample and we need this to be 0 0.53 micrograms per microliter. Because remember that we're going to have, this is going to be one quarters and this is going to be three quarters. And so if we want that final to be 0.4, we're gonna to have to say, okay, well, we have X times 0.75, so that's our three quarters, is going to equal 0 0.4. And so now we're going to have our x equals 0.4 divided by 0.75. So basically we're saying 0.4 um, times 4 thirds. And this is going to give us 0.4. 
our 0.53. And so that's how we got that 0.53 value. Say we wanted our final to be, say we decided that we wanted to load um, 20 micrograms. Maybe this isn't a purified sample. This is just a lysate. Well, now what we'd have to do is we'd have to say, okay, well, say we wanted in that same 10 microliters. This would mean we want a final of 20 micrograms divided by 10 microliters. And so that would be the same as two micrograms per microliter or two, mic two mg per mil. Now, in this case, we would have our X times 0.75. This is going to be the same. But now we're going to have this equal to. And so now we're going to have 2 divided by 0.75. And in this case, we're going to end up with wanting to calculate a value of about 2.7 um, mg per mil or micrograms per microliter. So see that you can do this for whatever you want. If we wanted to change the volume, say, well, then we would just do the same sort of thing. But you might say, OK, well, now we want 20 micrograms divided by 5 microliters, or I want 20 micrograms divided by 20 microliters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is going to tell you the, the concentration of the protein mixtures to make. So when we make those protein mixtures, we're going to want to make extra because we're going to want to basically have enough that if we can, we can redo the gel, and at a minimum, we have enough so that if we lose some during the volume, during sample transfer or during the um, the boiling, maybe some evaporates out. You're going to have extra, so um, you're not going to you're still going to be able to load equal volumes. So what I like to do is to make two times as much as you need. This is going to allow you to rerun gel if you need to, to run a new gel, or load new or load a lunate or load a new lane. If needed. And having that little bit extra is going to uh, um, account for volume loss in the various steps. Because remember, it's really important that you're loading equal amounts. So it's really important that even if you don't have enough to make two time, more than two times as much as you need, you're still going to want to load, you make a little extra, maybe like several microliters extra at the minimum. So maybe about five microliters extra to account for that volume loss. So going back to our example, if we wanted to load 10 microliters per lane, what we want to, might want to do is make, um, we'll make 25 microliters, except 25 is a little inconvenient because um, we'll have a four times buffer. So let's just go ahead and say we'll make 24 microliters um final per sample and so remember that when we're talking about this final final is going to have three quarters of our sample three quarter sample and one quarter buffer so 24 divided by four equals six so we're going to have six of our buffer and we're going to have three times six, so we're gonna have 18 of our sample. So we're gonna have 18 of our sample plus six of our buffer, which means that we need to prepare this. So this is what we need to prepare. We need to prepare 18 microliters of our sample and we need it to be at that 0.53 in our example, 0 0.53 mix per mil. So we need to prepare 18 microliters at 0.53 mix per mil for each sample, for each protein. So let's try some actual examples. Say we have three protein samples, we'll call them A, B, and C. 
A is going to be one microgram per microliter. We'll say B, okay, well, this one is going to be 10 micrograms per microliter. It's a lot more concentrated. And then C, this one, not as concentrated. It's only going to be 0.6 micrograms per microliter. Is we're going to want to calculate to have 18 microliters of each sample at 0 0.53 micrograms per microliter. So now we, what we have is we have a volume and we have a concentration. So this is going to be our final volume, and, and this is going to be our final concentration. And what we're going to do is we're gonna use C1V1 equals C2V2. And so this is gonna say our initial concentration times our initial volume is going to equal our final concentration times our final volume. And now we're saying that our final volume is going to be 18 microliters, and our final concentration is going to be 0.53 micrograms per microliter. If we're talking about our initial concentration, well, that's going to be this, and then this is going to be what we're trying to find. So we're going to be solving for this V1. So to put things a little more graphically, what we're going to have is we're going to have a tube for each of our samples. And you might be doing this in like a PCR tube, or you might just be doing this in an Eppendorf tube, um, but you're gonna have a tube for each of your samples. And then for each of these, you're gonna have the same amount of sample loading buffer. What I like to do is I start by adding, doing, putting in the sample loading buffer because this way I don't need to change my pipette tips um, in between the different samples. And because this way you're adding a larger volume to that smaller volume of your buffer. And so you can mix it while you add um, and get better mixing than if you're trying to mix while your pipette is set to a smaller amount. Now for each of these, you're going to have, so you would have your six microliters of your buffer and then you're going to add 18 microliters of sample. So you're gonna have 18 microliters of sample, but this is going to be your diluted sample. Diluted sample. So part of that is going to be your protein mixture and part of that is going to be um, just the water. So we'll just make that the water, we'll make it gray. And depending on how much protein you have, you might have more or less sample versus water. And so say you have, um, so maybe this is our A. We'll say that this is our A, this is our B, and this is our C. In the case of B, well, here we have a much higher concentration, so we're going to have less of our sample, and we're going to have more of the water. For our sample C, well, this is a lower concentration, so we're going to have more of our sample, and we're going to have less of the water. And in each of these cases, we have a final of my 18 microliters. So we need to figure out how much of our sample we're going to have so this part, this is what's gonna be our V1, and then this is what's gonna be our V2. And so we need to calculate the amount of our water too, which is going to be, water volume is going to be our V2, so our final volume minus that V1. And so we need to calculate to find our V1, and then we can easily figure out the water volume. So let's go ahead and let's do those calculations for each of our three samples. So let's start with sample A. So here we have one microgram per microliter. So remember that this is going to be our C1. So we're just gonna plug that into this equation. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna now ignore the units because I'm gonna keep them consistent in the, in the right units, but you should go ahead and make sure that you're including your units. Um, um, at least in the beginning and the end and that sort of thing, and that you're not changing units, um, keep them consistent. Because that's what's important. It doesn't matter what your units are, but it needs to be the same on each of these sides. Okay, so we're talking about micro, um, we're talking about our example A. So we have one microgram per microliter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our one, that's our concentration, 
We're going to have our V1. This is what we're trying to find. We're going to have our 0.53 for our C2, and we're going to have our 18 for our B2. Now all we need to do is what well, we can divide each of these sides by one, and we do a little math. 0.53 times 18 divided by 1 is going to be 9.54 microliters. So now what we need to do is our find, find the water volume. Water volume equals V2 minus V1. So what we're going to do is 18 minus 9.4, and that's going to give us our 8.46. So we're going to take 9.54 microliters of our sample. So remember that this is going to be our sample, and then we're going to add that to 8.46 microliters of our water. Um, so this is going to be our water, and this is then we're going to add it to this 6 microliters of our buffer. So our concentration too is also is going to be this the concentration of this mixture. And then our final concentration is going to be the concentration of this entire mixture with the buffer. So what this is going to mean, remember, is that this is going to give us a concentration of 0.53 in this sample plus um, this diluted sample. And then our final concentration is going to be that point five, that point four. Because remember, what we're going to have is we're going to have that 0.53, um, and it's going to be diluted. It's only going to be three quarters as concentrated once we add that sample loading buffer. And so when we have that, that is going to then give us our 0 0.4 micrograms per microliter. And then if we go and we load 10 microliters, well, now what we're going to have is we're going to have four micrograms loaded. And so that's how we that's how we can like check and see, okay, well, we did our calculations correctly. This is going to be how we calculate in order to load four micrograms. Okay, so that was sample A. Now, why don't you try and do it with samples B and C? So go ahead and like pause the video and try it for yourself, and then we'll come and we'll do it together. So now let's go ahead and do this together. Okay, so for our B, now what we're, we're going to have is our C1 is going to be equal to 10. We're still trying to find our V1. Our C2, this is still going to be 0.53. And our V2, this is still going to be 18. Now when we go ahead and we do our calculations, 0.53 times 18 divided by 10. Well, now we're saying we're only going to be loading um, 9.954 microliters. Now, depending on how comfortable you are with doing this, um, with pipetting that small of a volume, what you might want to do is you might want to actually pre-dilute your sample. So maybe dilute your initial sample to one microgram per microliter, so it's the same as the other, or you can prepare twice as much volume. But basically, just be, make it so that you're pipetting a volume that you're comfortable with. So that might mean that you need to pre-dilute some of your samples, um, which you can totally do. But let's say you're comfortable with pipetting the small of a volume. Well, now you have 0.54 microliters. Remember that this is going to be your V1. And now you have our V2 is 18. So how do we get from 18 to 0.954? Well, we're going to add water. So our water volume is going to be 18 minus 0 0.954. And so that's going to be about 17 microliters of water. Okay, so that is going to be um, how we prepare sample B. So you can see that we're adding a lot more water in this case because our sample is more concentrated. And now what about C? Well, for C, our sample is less concentrated. So we should expect that we'll be adding less water and more of our sample. So let's see, and that's the way that we can kind of like check our answer. So let's go ahead and let's do the calculations. So that'd be 0.6 times V1 is going to be 0.53 times 18. And so now in this case, our V1 is going to be 15.9 microliters of our sample. And now our water is going to be 18 minus 15.9. And that is going to give us 2.1 microliters of water.
So we'll go ahead and put 14.9 sample, 2.1 microliters of water, and we'll be adding that to our six microliters of sample buffer. And this is going to give us samples where they have an equal concentration, a concentration of 0.4 microliter grams per microliter final in this mixture. And then when we go and we load 10 microliters, well, now we have 0.4 times 10, we're loading four micrograms. And again, you're going to have to change these, val these values for how much microliters you want to load, as well as um, how many how much total mass you want to load. So remember, you're gonna be aiming for probably somewhere around two microliter, two micrograms four, to four micrograms for a purified sample. Um, if you're doing a Comassi staining, um, less if you're doing a Western blot. If you're doing a, like a mixture of protein, a non-purified mixture, some sort of lysate, you're probably doing something between 20 and five, um, something like 20 to 50 uh, micrograms of total protein. But remember that what you're doing is you're trying to co compare between samples. You're going to want to have equal total masses in order to compare, um, compare directly between the two of them. But you don't want to overload your samples and you don't want to underload your samples. Um, so finding that sweet spot might take a little bit of trial and error. So to summarize, what you're going to want to do is, one, determine initial protein concentrations. Because this might dictate how much sample you can actually physically load. Um, so you want to know your initial concentrations as well as your um, load capacity for the lanes or the gel. And this is just gonna kind of like set the practical boundaries. Now you want to do is determine desired mass to load per lane. So this might be um, dictated by the smallest, the lowest concentration, or for some of them, you might want to be loading a different amount than the others, but maybe you want to do like half as much um, as the others. So you have some direct comparison. So you can say this is half as concentrated as the others rather than, oh, it just had like one microliter left or it was a little off. Um, so once you've um, determined that mass to load per lane, well, now you want to do is you want to figure out concentration of mixture needed to load that amount in that cons in that um, volume. So what you're going to have is you're going to have your desired mass divided by the loading volume equals the final concentration of your mixture that you need to have. So now what you need to do is you need to calculate the final co protein concentration in that mixture. So now what you want to do is you want to take into account sample loading buffer to figure out protein mixture concentration. So you're gonna have your mixture concentration And this is going to be so remember that we're going to have basically if we had a 4x loading buffer, what that would mean is that we would have one part of the loading buffer to three parts of our sample. And so our sample is going to be three quarters of the final of the final mixture. And so basically what we have is we want to have three quarters times where our protein mix, 
protein um, solution concentration is going to equal that we want that to equal our final concentration of the mixture. So our protein solution concentration is going to be that final mixture concentration um, divided by 3 quarters, so times 4 thirds. And so this is going to give us that final protein solution concentration. And so now what we're going to want to do is what number are we on? We're going to do calculate to dilute protein solutions to same concentration. And remember that concentration is going to be that concentration that's going to give you this final concentration of your mixture. So it's going to be that final concentration of the mixture times four thirds in the case of a three quarters sample, if, of the case of a, um, like a one to a four time sample buffer. If you have like a six time sample buffer, now your sample is going to be five six. So you'd be dividing this by six fifths. But in this case, we're going to be given four thirds. So we're going to calculate to dilute protein samples to the same concentration using our C1V1 equals C2V2. So our C1, this is going to be what's going to be, we're going to have experimentally measured. And this is going to be different for each sample. Our V1, this is going to be what we're trying to find. Our C2, this is going to be our diluted protein concentration. So that's not going to be our mixture concentration. Because remember, we're calculating to make it a higher concentration so that when we dilute it with our sample loading buffer, it's still it's going to be at that final constant final final concentration of the mixture. The volume two, this is going to be the um Typically, this is going to be the volume of each of these solutions that we want to make. And so it's most convenient to make them all of an equal volume so that you can then add your sample buffer or you can add it to your sample buffer um, and then have, this, have the same amounts made for each of them easily. Um, and so this is going to be, depends on how much you want to make load. Um, and so remember that too, that this is this volume is going to be of the protein solution part and not including the buffer. And so your final, fine, this is going to be three quarters in the case of a 4x buffer or 5, 6 in the case of a 6x buffer of that final, final volume that you want to make. Um, so take that into account. This is going to be the calculate the volume of the mixture part, the protein, so the diluted protein and not the concentration of the mixture. So let me put that a little more clearly. So if we have our tube, what we're going to have is per each of these tubes, we're going to have our sample buffer. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have some sort of, we're going to have some sort of pro diluted protein. So this is going to be our protein solution. And so in this solution, some of it is going to be our protein. So this is going to be our concentrated protein. And this is our initial starting samples. And then some of it is going to be water. And so, or this might be like your um, buffer that your protein's in, but it's not going to be the sample buffer. It's just going to be some sort of dilution, um, diluent. Um, and so basically this is going to allow you to then have your sample at the desired concentration for your diluted protein solution. And then this diluted protein solution plus the sample buffer, and that's gonna be the final, final. So this is not gonna be your V2. So V2, um, so we have our C2 and V2, 
r of this. And then what we have is our final concentration of mixture is going to include that sample buffer. But when we're doing the C1V1 equals the C2V2 calculations to find the concentration um, to make of our diluted protein solution, this is just going to be on this, on this diluted protein solution and not including your sample buffer. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out, okay, well, how much protein and how much water do we have to have in order to have that final concentration of the mixture so that when we mix it with our sample buffer, then we get our desired final, final concentration. And so in our example, this would be our um, four micrograms per microliter. Oh, sorry, 0.4 micrograms per microliter since we're adding 10. And then in this example, this would be our 0.53 micrograms per microliter. And again, the reason why we're doing it this way is so that we're able to load equal volumes of each of our samples um, rather than having to load different volumes because they have different starting concentrations. Adding equal volumes is not only gonna be easier, but it can also make your gel run more consistently. So now what we do is we're going to do C1V1 equals C2V2. And this is going to allow us to find, find V1. And so this is going to be our V1. And then what we're going to do is find water volume. And that's going to be V2 minus V1. Um, because remember that our V2 is going to be, this is going to be our V2. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to subtract our sample volume from that final volume um, of our solution. And this is going to give us the volume of the water. So now we know our V1, we know our V2 minus V1. Um, so we know our water and our sample buffer. This is going to be, this is going to be the same for each of them. And remember that's going to be um, like the times um, divided by the X factor or whatever. So basically if you have a six X buffer, it's going to be one sixth of the total sample volume. If you have a four X buffer, it's going to be one fourth of the total sample volume. So we're making our mixture so that it's um, four thirds of that total volume so that when we multiply it by three quarters, we get that one. So when, now we calculate to find the diluted protein solutions. And now we actually prepare all the samples. We go and we load our samples and now we can compare between the lanes. So hope that helped um, and sorry, it was kind of confusing. Um, it's kind of hard to, it takes a little practice and kind of just walking through things and doing these calculations yourself. Um, so why don't you go ahead and try out with some different protein concentrations um, and do some practice problems and figure out what you need to load for your actual gels. So in our case, our sample C, this is a concentration of three megs per mil. Our, our sample D, this is 4.9 mg per mil. Our sample F, this is 0.613 mg per mil. Our G, this is 1.354 mg per mil. And our H, this is 1.624 mg per mil. Now what we want to do is we want to load seven micrograms per lane. So if this were totally pure, we'd want to load like maybe like two micrograms, but since these aren't very pure, um, we're going to go ahead and load seven micrograms. And this is just something that I found um, empirically. So just by doing the experiment, seven micrograms seem to be a good amount to get a nice fat band and still be able, and be able to see the contaminants without overloading it. So we need seven micrograms per lane. And we want to load a value of let's say 16 microliters. So if we have a value of 16 microliters, um, and so we have seven micrograms divided by 16 microliters, and so we want our final, final concentration. So our concentration, once we included the sample buffer, this is going to be about 0.43 about 0.44, we'll say 0.44 micrograms per microliter equals mgs per mil.
Okay, so that's what we're trying to get to our final. But now we need to take into account Now we need to take into account the um, the sample loading buffer. So what this means is that for each of those 16 microliters that we're loading, four of them are gonna be sample buffer and only 12 of it is actually gonna be our sample. And so only three quarters of what we load is actually our protein, di our diluted protein solution. So we need to make our protein solution so that, so we have our solution concentration times three quarters, we want this to equal our 0.44 micrograms per microliter. And so now what we're gonna say is we're gonna multiply this by four thirds. And now what we want is our solution concentration to be equal to 0.44 times four thirds. And now this is going to be about um, 0 0.59 mg per mil or micrograms per microliter. Uh, remember, that's the same thing. So now what we want to do is we want to figure out how to dilute each of our samples to a concentration of 0.59 mg per mil. Now what we want to do is we're gonna prepare enough, um, let's prepare 40 microliters of each of our samples. This way we have more than enough to run each of these twice if needed. So what we have is this is going to be our 0.59 mg per mil, this is going to be our V2. And then these are going to be our C1s. If we want for a final volume of, so this is our of mixture of 40 microliters, 10 microliters of that is going to be our buffer. So 30 microliters of that is our sample is our diluted sample. Okay, So what we need to do is we need to make 30 microliters of each of these samples at 0.59 mg per mil. So remember that th we're, this is our V2 for calculating the diluted protein solution. So sorry, this is going to be our C2. And what we're trying to find here is we're trying to find our V. So this is going to be our V2. So this is the volume of our protein solution. And this is the concentration of the protein solution. And those are our final. Um, so not our final final once we've added the buffer, but our final of the diluted protein solution that we add to the buffer. And this is our initial concentration. And so now what we need to do is we need to do our C1V1 equals C2V2 for each of these samples. Taking each of these as our C1, taking the volume one, this is what we're trying to find. Concentration two, this is what we said was our 0.59 mg per mil, because remember, this is the concentration before we dilute it with the sample buffer. And then our volume two, that's going to be this 30 microliters, because remember, this is the 30 microliters before we mix it with that sample buffer to get our um, final volume of 40 microliters. So this is our C1V1 equals C2V2 concentration calculations, and we want to solve for V1 for each of these. So I'll do one. Um, I'll do one, and then I will let you do the others um, to see if you can do them correctly. Okay. So writing it out a little clearer. In this case, our C1 is going to be our three megs per mil. Our V1, this is what we're trying to find. Our C2, this is going to be equal to that 0.59 mg per mil. And then our V2, that's going to be our 30 microliters. So what we want to do is we can rearrange this equation. So if we divide each side by C1, we get V1 equals C2, V2 over C1. So our V1 is going to be plug and chug 0.59 times 30, and we're going to divide that by three. And what we get is that we have, we need a volume of 5.9 microliters. Okay, so this is gonna be 5.9 microliters of our concentrated protein solution. So that was the volume of our protein solution, but remember that we need to add the water to dilute it to the, um, to get it to that same volume of each of them. And so what we need to do is we need to have our water 
equals V2 minus V1. Because remember, we want to get this up to 30 microliters. Um, and we have our V1 is 5.9. So we're going to have 30 minus 5.9. And this is going to give us 24.1 microliters of water. So what this means is that for each of our samples, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and when we're in the lab, we're going to be taking our tubes. We're going to be loading, we're going to be having six microliters of our dye. For sample A, what we're going to have is we're going to be loading, be adding 5.9 of our sample. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding 24.1 of our water. And so now why don't you go ahead and do this for these other samples. Before you do it, and then after when you're checking your work, think about whether it's logical or not. If you have a higher starting concentration, what would you expect in terms of how much sample versus water you would need? You should need to have less of your sample and more of the water. But what about if your sample is less concentrated, such as sample F? What do you expect now? Now you would expect that you would have to load more of the sample, so you would use less of the water to be able to have that final, same final volume for each of your samples. So why don't you go ahead and try these out for yourselves, and then we can go over them.